Okay, I showed you a lot of PP long stocking shooting locations in the past few weeks on this YouTube channel. I showed you the famous town PP is living in, I showed you the famous candy store, I even showed you Villa Villecula, and today it's time for the grand finale. Today we're going on a little road trip and I will show you the places that were filmed a bit outside the city. And when I mean a bit outside, I mean we're going on a road trip all over Sweden and also to a totally different country. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, let's go. Before we leave the island of Gotland, there is still one last shooting location I want to show you here. This shooting location is a little bit outside the city center of Visby and it actually fits quite well with today's video. Because in this episode, Pippi, Tommy and Annika go on a trip, like we do today. And this trip starts on a huge green meadow and in the background you can see some old historic windmills. And I think I found them. <laughs> And this is it, the famous scene we know from the Pippi Longstocking series. Pippi's horse is standing on a huge meadow and in the background, the old historic windmill. Both of them are still here, the windmill and the meadow. And that is actually not a given because there used to be four windmills on this huge green meadow, but one of them burned down in the year 1976. This windmill used to be a discotheque back then and during a party night and because of a technical error, a fire broke out and the windmill was destroyed. That was a huge tragedy for the city of Visby because also at that time the windmill was already more than a hundred years old and it used to be a landmark of the city. However, the other three windmills survived. Their names are Cheringen, Lorgan and Plorgan and they are still standing here on this huge green meadow just like in the Pippi Longstocking show. The scene we can see in the show is actually quite funny because it looks a bit like Pippi, Tommy and Annika are like in the middle of nature, which is not like that in reality. This meadow really is in the city of Visby. There are houses and other buildings all around this meadow, this little hill, which is quite interesting for me because when I think about cities in my home country, Germany, for example, there are no huge meadows in the cities. And if there is a huge green meadow, a few years later, somebody builds something on it. <laughs> so for me, it's actually a bit surprising that this huge meadow, 54 years later, after the Pippi Longstocking show was shot, still exists today. Okay, before we leave this green meadow and also the island of Gotland, there are actually a few more shooting locations I could show you here on the island of Gotland, but I won't because that would be a little bit too much and I have to move on. <laughs> but if you're interested in those locations, let me give you a few examples. The island of Gotland also has a little sister, which is the island of Foireux. On the beaches of the island of Foireux, they filmed those scenes with the pirate ship uh, when Pippi goes to to Takatuka land. There is also a grotto on the island of Gotland, the Lumalunda Grotto. Also this place plays a quite important role in the Pippi Longstocking show. There is also the Tofta church. This is the church we can see in the scene where Pippi is going on a balloon ride with Tommy and Annika and then she annoys the priest. Yeah, all of those shooting locations I'm not going to show you today. That would be a bit too much for my trip. And one last place I'd like to mention, which is not on the island of Gotland, but it was requested quite a lot. It's this place, the huge fortress we can see in the Takatuka land episodes. This is actually not just one fortress, it's actually two fortresses. One of them is standing in Batva in Montenegro. The other one is standing in the Stockholm area in Sweden, which is the fortress Vaxholm. So if you want to visit this place yourself, now you know where it is. <laughs> So, and that's it, finally, from the island of Gotland. Because the next shooting location I want to show you is quite far away from here. It's the famous living house of Tommy and Annika. And that house 
for some reason is not located on the island of Gotland. There are a lot of beautiful houses on the island, but they chose to film those scenes near Stockholm, which is super far away from here. We have to go with the ferry to the mainland and then we have to do a little car ride and well, that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> Okay, that was a fast ride, <laughs> much faster than in reality. Uh, we are here now in Drottningholm, a small village not far away from Stockholm. This village is famous for its castle, which is a huge tourist attraction, but we are not interested in that at all. We're only interested in the famous living house of Tommy and Annika. I hope you're ready for the big moment. This is it, the famous living house of Tommy and Annika, and this is how it looks like today. Isn't that beautiful? Almost nothing has changed in this street and also the house almost looks exactly the same. Of course, within the past 54 years, it was renovated, obviously. Look at the chimneys, they look a bit different today. It was also painted a bit differently during that time. There is a little fence on the left side of the house, which wasn't here 54 years ago. And also two trees are missing. They were standing right in front of the entrance back then. They are gone today, but everything else is basically the same. Also, the neighbor's house on the right side is still here. We can see a lot of Tommy and Annika's neighborhood in this scene. We can see a group of kids bullying a guy called Wille. And all of that happens right in front of this house, which is the neighbor's house of Tommy and Annika. It's standing on the other side of the street. And also in this scene, we can see almost nothing has changed. The house still exists and it looks almost like 54 years ago. There is still this little gravel place right in front of the house. The trees and flowers have changed, but if you take a look at the facade or the windows of the house, it still looks like 54 years ago. And here she is, Pippi Longstocking. She's watching the scene and she's yelling at the boys that they should stop bullying Villa. Pippi Longstocking is standing right in front of Tommy and Annika's house. We can see it here from a different perspective. And also in this scene, we can see almost nothing has changed, but the huge two trees right in front of the entrance disappeared. They are not here anymore. Also, Tommy and Annika are watching the scene. They are standing in front of their window that was filmed from over here. And here's the disgusting leader of the group. His name is Banker and he's ready to beat Pippi Longstocking. That was filmed from over here. Yeah, but we all know that was a huge mistake because Pippi Longstocking throws this annoying boy up a tree. Yeah, you heard me right. <laughs> and he's hanging there. Uh, the question now is, is this tree still here? And I think I have to disappoint you. I haven't found a tree which looks like this. Maybe it's because they filmed this scene in a studio and this tree was never here. But maybe also something else happened here within the past 54 years because there are actually also a few more trees missing in this neighborhood. I can show you that in some other scenes. Now all the other boys are really afraid and Pippi Longstocking really enjoys that and she scares the boys. This scene was filmed from over here. There is a gate and a fence right behind Pippi Longstocking and both of them look a bit different today. The boys are so scared that they run down this street and that was filmed from over here. And in this scene we can see quite good what I was just talking about. In this scene we can see all of the trees are gone. Not only the tree right in front of Tommy and Annika's house, also the trees right next to the street. You can see that. I'm not really sure what happened here. Maybe the trees were just old or something, but maybe there was also, I don't know, some kind of a storm or something within the past 54 years. Anyway, today, right next to this street, we can see much younger trees. 
But even though the trees are gone, this street, this neighborhood is still very green. We can see that in this scene. There is a house on the left side, a red one, and a yellow house on the right side. And today we actually cannot really see them because there are so many bushes and trees around those houses. So it's a very green neighborhood. Everything else basically looks the same. Also this little gravel road on the right side of the picture is still here. And here's one more scene I'd like to show you. This is from the beginning of the plot when the boys chase Villa. That was filmed from over here and also in this scene we can see the trees are gone but everything else still looks the same, even the red house in the background. Okay, and before we leave this place, let me show you this real quick. This is the backyard of Tommy and Annika's house. And this is the place right behind this hedge uh, where they filmed the scene when uh, Tommy and Annika's father tries to play darts and he's not very good at it. And then Pippi Longstocking comes and she wins every time. Yeah, that was filmed somewhere over here. But since this is private property, of course, we don't go there. I think it's time to leave this idyllic neighborhood and to move on. Okay, there is one thing that bothers me a bit about my shooting location tour. So far, I only showed you one scene that takes place in nature, which was the windmill scene with a huge meadow in front of it, even though in the PP Longstocking series there is a lot of nature to see. The problem is most of those places are not really known. It's really hard to find the addresses and the locations of those places. However, there is one place I found, which is a huge query that you can see in the PP Longstocking show in different episodes. And I think that's the next place we're going now. And uh, let's see if I'm right. Well, the quarry I'm talking about also has a name, Sten Hamra. It's not that far away from Tommy and Annika's house, just 16 kilometers, 20 minutes with the car. But the area is obviously not that small, so I'm not 100% sure where exactly those scenes were filmed. So I would say, let's just go there and let's take a little walk through the nature to find out. Okay, here we are at the top of the quarry. And now the big question is, where did they film the scenes from the Pippi Longstocking show? And well, let me show you some scenes I'm searching for. This scene is quite iconic from the show. You can see it in the episode when Tommy and Annika run away from home together with Pippi and then they walk around and then they arrive at the top of this rock right here, which in reality, by the way, makes absolutely no sense at all. <laughs> you can't just arrive at such a rock here. You actually have to climb it to reach the top. Anyway, for some reason, Pippi, Tommy, and Annika arrive at the top of this rock after a long walk and then they need to get down. I'm really not sure which rock they used for this scene. There is a little sign at the entrance of this quarry, but also this sign doesn't really tell you which rock they used. So I was thinking maybe it's this rock over here because the rock we can see in the scene has a quite iconic peak. It's quite sharp and also this rock right here has a quite sharp iconic peak but as I said I'm absolutely not sure. Then there is another rock we can see in the Pippi Longstocking show it's this one over here. This is not shown in the episode where Tommy and Annika run away from home. This is a totally different episode. This is where Pippi, Tommy and Annika act as if they were shipwrecked and then they also arrive with a boat at this quarry which also would not make sense in reality. Anyway the rock we can see in this scene Maybe it's this one over here, right behind the trees, because the rock we can see in the show has 
also a quite iconic peak. Uh, looks a bit like stairs <laughs> or something. And also this rock over here looks a bit like that. Anyway, even though those scenes might remain a mystery, there is one scene I found. At least I'm pretty sure about that. And it's this scene. We can see Pippi Longstocking's horse standing in front of a rock, in front of a lake. And I think those scenes were filmed from over here. We can see a lake, we can see the shore on the other side, we can see little rocks on the right side, we can see rocks in the background on the right side and also on the left side. So this place really looks like in the show. My picture is a bit zoomed out, but actually this fits quite well, doesn't it? Okay, before we leave this place, maybe a little fun fact about this place. I'm standing right here. This quarry was active from 1884 to 1919. And during this time, it was basically used to build the Swedish capital, Stockholm. Most of the roads and also the sidewalks were built from the stones that were extracted from this quarry. 130 workers were employed here under the worst conditions, by the way. They got all sorts of diseases and some even died in blasts that went wrong. And well, when the mining finally ended, this place was used a lot in Swedish TV shows. Not only Pippi Longstocking, but also, for example, Astrid Lindgren's Lionheart Brothers. Those scenes were also filmed right here at this place. And that's the famous quarry. Great. Right? Well, and this could also be the end of my PP Longstocking shooting location tour, because that were basically all the places I wanted to show you here in Sweden. Could be the end, because you know me, of course we go the extra mile. Or to be precise, it's 635 kilometers with the car. If you remember the show, uh, you might have noticed they don't only show you scenes they filmed in summer in the show, they also show you scenes that have been filmed in winter time. Uh, also snow plays a quite important role in some episodes. And all of those scenes haven't been filmed in Sweden. They have been filmed in Sweden's neighboring country, which is Norway, in a small town called Ruros. And well, that's eight hours away from here with the car. And well, that's the place we're going now. <laughs> Okay, and here we are in Norway. Yeah, actually two days have passed uh, since we talked to each other the last time because this trip was quite long, so I did it in two steps. But now I'm here in the village of Ros, which used to be an old mining town in the past. Until the 1970s, copper ore was extracted here. And if you drive into town, you still see those huge slag mountains, uh, some relics of the past. And those mountains actually also play a quite important role in the PP Longstocking series. Um, even though you can't really see those mountains in the series, it's a bit complicated. Um, I think let's go into town and I will show you what I mean. Okay, here we are. This is the place 
I'm searching for. This is the place we all know from the Pippi Longstocking show where Pippi forms a giant snowball and throws it at Thunder Carlson and Bloom, the two crooks, because they stole her gold. Yeah, all of that happened in this street right here. And here we can also see what I was just talking about. In the background, in reality, we can see those huge slag mountains, which in the Pippi Longstocking show are not slag mountains. They just look like normal mountains with snow on them. Well, it's not that natural in reality. Anyway, everything else we can see in this street right here basically looks the same. We can still see those small cabins on the left side and on the right side of the road. And we can also see that in other scenes, not much has changed in the streets of Ruros. And there is also a reason for that. Just like in Visby on the island of Gotland in Sweden, Ruros is a UNESCO heritage. So you can't just change things in the city center. So most of the houses we can see in the Pippi Longstocking show still exist today. Let me show you some more scenes. For example, this one. This is the reverse shot. We can see Thunder Carlson and Bloom. They run away from the snowball down this road. And we can see almost nothing has changed here. The houses today have a different color. For example, the house on the left side of the street, it's now dark brown. In the past, it used to be yellow. Also, the house at the end of the street used to be yellow in the past. Today, it's brown. But the street looks exactly the same. There are some fairy lights at the end of the road. You can see that. I'm pretty sure this is a really beautiful place when it's Christmas time. I'd really like to come here again when it's Christmas. And by the way, look at the snow. It goes basically up to the windows. Well, the producers really chose the perfect view for this scene. This is the snowball once again. This time it's filmed a few meters down the road. Once again, we can see the houses on the left side and on the right side of the street. Also here we can see they have different colors today. The house on the left side today has red windows, which in my opinion looks even better than in the past. And also all of the other houses we can see in the street also still exist today, 54 years later. And here they are once again, Thunder Carlson and Bloom, this time in close up. Once again, we can see the house in the background, which is brown today. In the past, it used to be yellow. And after this scene, it gets interesting because then Thunder Carlson and Bloom get hit by the huge snowball right in front of this house, a white house with green windows. And well, if you watched carefully, you know, there is a little filming error here. <laughs> Once again, Thunder Carlson and Bloom run towards a yellow house, which is brown today, but they do not run towards a white house with green windows. So for some reason, they used a different house to film the end scene. And in reality, the snowball would have rolled around this curve to the left and then to the right again, and then it would have crashed in front of this house. That makes absolutely no sense in reality. I know PP Longstocking can do a lot of things, but I'm pretty sure she cannot control snowballs. Or can she? <laughs> anyway, also right in front of this white and green house, everything still looks exactly the same. The house in the background has a slightly different facade, but the house on the right side, it looks just like in the show. Let me show you some more scenes from this place. For example, this one, Pippi is running towards Thunder Carlson and Bloom to get her gold back. That was filmed from over here. And also this scene is quite interesting. We can see Thunder Carlson and Bloom once again. They arrive at this street and they are standing right between two houses. All of those houses also still exist today. The snow is gone, but instead the houses have grass and flowers on their roofs, which looks quite interesting, right? In this scene, we can see Tommy and Annika talking to Pippi and they are building a snow wall or something like that, or a fortress. That was filmed from over here. Today, there is no snow at all, only rubble. And once again, Thunder Carlson and Bloom, this time in front of a dark yellow house, which is dark brown today. There are a few more scenes filmed here in Ruros. The next scene I want to show you is the scene where Pippi rides her horse into town. And that should only be a few meters away from here. I think down the hill.
Well, the first thing I noticed here while I was walking down the street is actually this beautiful, amazing vintage car. Isn't that great? <laughs> it looks a bit like Klingenklang's police car in the Pippi Longstocking show, doesn't it? But, well, that's actually not what I wanted to show you. This is the scene I wanted to show you. We can see Tommy and Annika in the middle of the picture. They're standing in the middle of this street. And in the background, we can see Pippi Longstocking coming with her horse. And she talks to Tommy and Annika about going to school. And also in this scene, we can see all the houses are still standing in this street, even though all of the colors have changed. For example, the house on the left side, which was white, greenish or bluish in the past, looks totally different. It's red today. Houses that used to be green in the past are brown today. Houses that used to be white in the past are red today. So obviously the people in Ruros got a little creative within the past 54 years. There are just some small elements, for example, a lantern in front of a door or something. And what is also quite interesting, there are no power lines anymore. So I think today, like in most European cities, the power supply is just underground. And here's the scene from a different perspective. Once again, we can see Tommy and Annika. Once again, we can see Pippi Longstocking. And once again, we can see those beautiful, colorful houses in the background. Okay, and now it's time to show you the last shooting location for today, which is the scene where Pippi plays cat and mouse with the cops. I know she does that a lot of times in the show, uh, but this time uh, on a market square and she's hiding um, behind a man with a huge fur coat. I don't know if you remember the scene. If you don't, then I will show it to you now. And here it is, the famous market square we can see in the Pippi Longstocking show, which in reality is not really a market square, it's a parking lot. <laughs> I'm not really sure if also in reality there is a market sometimes here. Um, there is actually a, a very popular market here in Ruros. It's called Ruros Martnan. It's a market and a fair and it's really famous. 70 to 80 thousand people are coming here every year to see this market. Anyway, today there is no market at all. There is just a parking lot. <laughs> but if we take a look at the houses around this square, we can see it's exactly this place. The house on the left side is still the same. The house on the right side is also still the same. It has a different color. The only thing that's a bit different is the house in the middle. You see that? It's much higher than the house we can see in the Pippi Longstocking show. And it also looks totally different. So maybe they demolished this house over the years and built something new here. At least it looks totally different than in the show. This is the reverse shot. A lot of people on the market square, not like that today, but also in this scene, we can see all of the houses in the background still look exactly like 54 years ago. And this is the funny scene I was talking about. We can see the man with the fur coat. Pippi is hiding behind him. He's standing right in front of this house right here. Once again, we can see it has a different color today. Once again, we can see how much snow there obviously is when it's winter time in Röros. The policeman who is searching for Pippi Longstocking is wondering, hmm, where is she? Well, and he's wandering right in front of this yellow house right here. And even though there are two policemen and also Miss Presalius, Pippi Longstocking once again manages to escape. And that scene was filmed from over here. Once again, we can see almost nothing has changed in this street. And this is the last scene I'd like to show you from this place. And also the last scene of my Pippi Longstocking shooting location tour. Pippi Longstocking is waving the police officers and that was filmed right at this place. On the left side of the picture we can see 54 years ago there used to be some kind of a business or something. Metal industry, I think is written on the sign over there. Yeah that sign is gone today but those brown houses on the right side of the street are still there. The brown house in the background is also still there and also the house on the left side is still there. Isn't that beautiful? Sure. 
Okay, that's it. <laughs> That was my PP Long Stocking shooting location tour. After many days on the road, after many kilometers, after many sunburns, <laughs> uh, I finally made it. Yeah, that's that's it. That's my PP Long Stocking shooting location tour. I hope you liked what I did here on my channel in the past weeks. If you did, maybe write a comment down below because, of course, there are a lot more Astrid Lindgren movies out there, and we can also do uh, a shooting location tour of those movies. So uh, yeah, maybe write a comment down below. What you can also do of course is to leave a thumbs up you can also hit the subscribe button of this channel and ring the bell so you won't miss any upcoming filming location tour and if you'd like to support me and my work you can also do that for example on patreon the link is in the description and you can become a channel member on my youtube channel then you will also get exclusive stuff for example all of the addresses of the places i showed you in this video and in the videos from the past weeks so uh, yeah maybe it's uh, worth it you should uh, check that out yeah that was my pp long stocking shooting location tour but that was not my last video from Scandinavia yet. There's another one coming in two weeks, so uh, you should check that out. Um, yeah, and uh, so far, I would say, have a safe journey and see you next time.